What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Phones and Drones. For those of you that follow the channel, you know we've been doing a lot of hands-on coverage for you guys for the new Pixel 6 and 6 Pro, Google's latest flagships. They've made tremendous progress from hardware to software with Material U and Android 12. We've done some discussions about the weird embargoes, some comparisons. We have our full review, Pixel 6 Pro, and other photo tests coming soon. But first, one of the highly requested features actually, especially for this Pixel 6 and Google's new Tensor chip, is how well that chip is going to actually perform on gaming and in benchmarks. So having said that, I wanted to go ahead and show you guys a little bit more in regards to those benchmarks that we were talking about, running Geekbench and 3 d Mark, and also running PUBG and Call of Duty. So let's go ahead and actually run Geekbench first. And you can see I haven't even launched this yet. This is the first time. You can see it's pulling in Android 12, Pixel 6, ARM V8, and the different clusters for the processors. Let's go ahead and run these benchmarks and we'll come right back. All right, we're coming up on the end there. As you can see, it took three minutes to run that benchmark. And here's what we got. A single core score of 1039 and a multi-core score of 2820. So by no means is that groundbreaking. This is nothing new, but the way kind of like Apple optimizes their hardware and software now with Google and their partnership with Samsung and their chip they're running, part of this Tensor, this is really good enough for your day-to-day -day operations. You can kind of see what it pulled up here. Again, nothing out of control. There's your eight gigs of RAM you can see. Nothing really new to be seen here. It took, what, about three, four minutes to run that test, like I said. The phone actually did not get warm during that test, which is uh, definitely nice to see as well. So let's go ahead to 3D Mark and skip all this and go right through. Let's do the, what do we want to do? Let's just do the regular wildlife test. So we'll go ahead and download this and run it and we'll be right back. All right, so let's go ahead and run this one minute test and see how it handles it. I'm hoping again, it'll kind of stay pretty light on the heat, pretty consistent with the frame rates and hopefully everything will uh, work properly. Uh, if you guys have followed along with some of our other videos, there's definitely been a few hiccups. Uh, I've been told we're kind of running pre-release software. There's a rumor where Google will actually unveil, or I should say release a new day one patch, probably today when this video goes live at some point, um, but I haven't confirmed that necessarily yet. I thought Google posted something on their blog post, but we will definitely see. What you can see here is that it's showing with that new game center that it's sticking at 60 FPS but you can see here it's actually fluctuating around 30 up to 50 and kind of everywhere in between right now so that's kind of interesting to see but let's finalize this test and see what we actually get okay so all right so it got a score of 6576 the average frame rate like you said like I said you can see it's 39.4 not totally at the 60 frames per second you can see where it kind of ranks in regards to other devices and it's pretty high that tensor chip is doing exactly what it should be you're actually seeing that you're gonna be 92 percent of other devices out there which is not bad at all so you can see the performance battery uh, monitoring the battery stayed exactly consistent the whole time for that minute at 87% at 32 to 33 degrees Celsius. So we didn't lose any battery, phone stayed pretty consistently cool, and the frame rates, like we said, were around 27 to 53 frames per second. Aside from that, like we said, we'll launch a little bit of PUBG here, and it should kick us out of this old game we were in, hopefully any second. There we go. All right. So here, 
as you saw, I had to kind of do the same presses numerous times uh, to get something to respond. That's kind of along the lines of one of the other issues I was having. The response rate on touches were not very consistent at all times. So, here we go. Let's go ahead and get in a match again and see what we can get. I've had no issues, obviously, with the graphics. Not like this is a very graphic intense game, but the frame rates have been pretty consistent. They haven't fluctuated too much on here uh, during gameplay. Here we go. You can see it's actually showing it was low at first for a second, but again, no real issue at all. Everything's pretty smooth, so that tensor chip is doing its job. You can see just how it is working. Nothing really too much here. I'm not going to go into a, a deep dive in the gameplay. Back to Call of Duty, which is definitely more my speed. Um, you can see right here, we're actually in the practice. And it's holding steady at 60. So let's see what we got here. Do a kill streak. And there we go. So, again, from what I've been playing, as minimal as it has been for all the games, they've worked pretty seamlessly and pretty smoothly. I haven't had any issues really. There has been no real dropped frame rates consistently. It happens, but it happens in all phones where at some point there is some sort of dropped frame. But aside from that, as you can see, nothing crazy. Again, I'll show you guys those game get dashboards that you have now. You have that Do Not Disturb, like I said, where you can display those frames per second counter, recording your screenshot, and taking a screenshot. It's actually a quick, neat little trick that uh, Google has implemented here. I'm glad they did. It has worked out pretty well in the few times I've used it. And you do have a couple of extra settings down here for that game dashboard and the Do Not Disturb while you're playing games as well. So, again, just a quick deep dive into this. What do you guys think? Is that the performance on par with what you were expecting from this Tensor chip? Did you expect to be blown away? Clearly, from what we saw in those uh, scores, it doesn't beat the Snapdragon 888. The 888 is still the faster chip. It's more, you know, proven. But we know what Google can do with their hardware now and with this software advantage, hopefully, through some updates, you will actually have a better experience and they'll be able to tweak the software and what you actually get out of this chip in upcoming updates. But comment down below, let me know what you guys think. Make sure to thumbs up this video guys, it really helps us out. Subscribe to the channel and we will catch you in the next one. Peace.